And it de- this doesn't sound like it's talking about your dad, but when we get to the end of the story, you'll see that it is about your dad. Uh, um, so one day I'm at in the office, and Aisa comes in. And she goes, Julie, come here. I have to talk to you. I'm like, okay. So we go outside, and she goes, I got you. You have to do something with me. And I'm like, uh, okay, what are you talking about? And she goes, and th- just to preface this, it was, if it wasn't Halloween, it was right around Halloween. And there was a place called Bobby McGee's, oh, yeah. which was on the Coast yeah. Highway, very close to Bayshore's yeah. entrance. And uh, was Bobby McGee's where Soul Canteen is or the Tavern House? It, it's, no, it's where Starbucks. like the Starbucks and that gas station, you know, oh, like that, yeah, yeah, the okay, Starbucks right. that's on the other side of Bayside yeah. there. Mm-hmm. So she's like, you've got to do this with me. And I'm like, what and she goes she goes i think ethan has a girlfriend or a girl that he's going to hang out with and she goes i want to go spy on him i'm like i'm not going to go spy on him you know and she goes she goes no i just can't believe you know i'm trying to think like you were probably only 16 how in the heck you got into bobby mcgee's i don't really know but in those days it wasn't hard what was the the what's the isadores Do you remember yes isadores? Oh, yeah. and you would dance it was like a bar but you know there was dancing and it was you, know, kind you, of you like could eat there too and, and the guy would go like hey i'm patio furniture yes you know, they'd have like <laughs> weird names and you know, they'd have outfits on and they'd talk. <laughs> is that bobby mcgee's right yes yeah. yeah and so so anyway aisa is saying I'm just so curious because I think she's thinking of you as her younger little brother. Like, you no, know, she's like, got some alternative thing. You know, like going. what? You know, what is she's he gonna doing? Try to hang me for something. something. <laughs> so she goes. I really. We're gonna go. And it was because it was close to Halloween, or you had to wear costumes. Everybody's wearing costumes. Hmm. And so I go. I don't have a costume. And she goes. Don't worry about it. I've got you covered. So I'm sure your dad probably didn't wasn't too happy about this but she goes into the house she goes into the linen closet gets two like beautiful sheets cuts holes in them to make it like ghosts and makes ghosts costumes for us out of sheets from the house and of course you know Bob McGee's doesn't start until later in the evening so she goes well we'll just go to dinner or do something before we go and see if we can see Ethan and see what he's doing and Ace is older than Julie yeah, she's two years older than I am. Yeah, so I said, okay, you know. Um, so, long story you short. You pretty easy going. I, yes. <laughs> Go with the flow. So, uh, I was driving, so I drove her. And, you know, we drive up and they had a valet. So, of course, you didn't have the option to park your own car. So, you had to use the valet, which was fine. But here I am in a ghost costume, if you will. And... You know, you'd, I have, you know, a purse like this that I don't want to have to be dealing with while I'm inside the bar. So I remember taking my purse and sticking it like underneath the seat of my car, thinking I'd kind of hide it a little bit. So anyway, we go inside and we In we're... In those days there was space under the yes, seat. Yes, there was space under the seat. Yes. So stick the purse in there. Obviously the valet has the keys. We go inside and, you know, much to her disappointment, we were like cruising around. We could not find you or there was there was uh, we weren't being able to spy on you like she was hoping to and get some, you know, good scoop on whoever this girl was that you were supposedly meeting up with there. And I don't even know how she got the information that this was happening. But anyway, so fast forward i'm like you know what this is ridiculous he's not here we you know so finally we leave i drive her you know drop her off at the house go to my house park the car you know go in the house go to bed so the next morning when i'm waking up have to go to school i go out to you know leave and i'm like where did i put my purse kind of thing i'm like oh yeah yeah i put it in my car underneath the seat so i go out to my car lo and behold the purse is not there oh no so Obviously, the valet or somebody in that parking lot took my purse. And uh, so I went through the whole thing of, you know, canceling, getting a new Aisa, driver's license. There are consequences to these things that you put people through. <laughs> so, you know, you have to go through the whole thing of, you know, getting a new driver's license, et cetera, et cetera. But 
so fast forward two or three weeks, let's say, at my house, at, I got a phone call from a postman in Costa Mesa. And he said, hey, is this, you know, Julie Comstock? And I said, yes. And he goes, I, you know, was doing my postal route and I kind of, to have my lunch, I pulled behind Kmart, which was on Harbor Boulevard there, just to park my car, eat my sandwich. And I noticed kind of where the dumpster was that it looked like, you know, a purse or something behind it. So he said, I, you know, went and looked at it and lo and behold, I found your wallet and your ID and stuff. So I gave you a call. You know, so obviously whoever, you know, they took the cash or whatever was in there and, you know, then dumped the purse, you know, behind Kmart there. So I said, oh my gosh, that's so nice. He goes, I would love to, you know, get it back to you somehow. So I said, that'd be great. So, you know, the next day I come to work and I'm telling your dad this story. I didn't tell him the part about how this happened. I just said my, I just told him that my purse was now, stolen. Now she's in deep because she's omitted Yes, right? yeah. So now you're trapped. Yes, That's how they get yes. So I... Welcome to my family. <laughs> so I didn't tell him exactly what led up to my purse being stolen, but I had mentioned the fact that, you know, my purse had been stolen, but then I had gotten this phone call from this nice postman who, you know, had found the purse and, you know, took the time to call me and want to return it to me. So he says, oh my gosh, that is just like so awesome. So he... Is anybody worried that the postman is the guy who stole the purse and <laughs> thought you were cute on your driver's license photo and is trying to lure you down an alley? This is... And you know, I think it, it was, life was so simple and innocent then. I don't think people went down that road in their head. But so your dad was super cute and so I told him that I was going to be meeting this guy, which like, I guess when you say that out loud, it does sound a little creepy, but back in the day, people didn't think that way. Yes. So, uh, he wrote, he, you know, one, one of his, a, a picture of himself, he wrote on it to, I can't think of what the guy's name was now, but whatever his name was, he goes, uh, if there were more people like you in the world, the world would be a better place. You know, and so that when I went to pick up my purse, I had that to give to the postman. So, it was a postman and it was, yes. oh, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still here. <laughs> I thought this is where you got abducted, taken to Mexico. No, no. 